everyone, my name is Soren, and welcome back to another video. I do apologize a little bit, I didn't set up the whole fancy lighting system that I have in the background, so the lighting in this video might be a little weird. If it looks a little weird, I'm sorry. I didn't have a ton of time to film this video until Thursday. I didn't even know what video I was gonna do this weekend. I say Thursday because on Thursday, Anthrocon's general room blocking came out, was opened, or however you say that. I was able to book my room for Anthrocon on Thursday. A lot of big cons have been kind of having some problems with room blocking lately, so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about some of my thoughts on what works, what doesn't, possible ways that we could solve some of the problems that they've been having. So first things first, with small cons, you basically just register and then when the room block opens, you can go get a room and usually the hotel does not fill up. It's not a big deal. Then there are the big conventions. I'm talking about Further Confusion, Denver, MFF, Midwest Fur Fest is like this, and Anthrocon. Those are the ones that I've had this experience with recently. So the problem that all of these really big conventions are having right now is well, they don't have enough hotel rooms. When you're going to a convention that you don't need to be in costume for, like for example, I went to a local comic convention. It wasn't a big deal to not have a room in the convention center. There was a hotel there. I could have stayed there if I wanted to, but I could just drive my car from my apartment. It's like a five minute drive. And I wasn't going in fursuit, so it wasn't a big deal if I needed to drive my car. I could just get in the car and drive down there. The same goes for conventions that might be like business related, but with the furry fandom, it's kind of different. Especially if you're in fursuit, you really want to be as close to the convention center as possible because you probably know this, fursuits are very warm. It can be pretty important to be able to get back to your hotel room and get out of suit as quickly as possible. Now, of course, I'm not gonna say that it's unacceptable or something to take your fursuit off outside or in the convention space. If you think you are seriously in danger or if your handler thinks you're seriously in danger, you should take your fursuit off wherever you are. Wearing a fursuit to a convention is not the same as going to a convention without a fursuit. And it's kind of important if you're gonna be in costume to have easy access to the convention center. The problem that that creates within the furry fandom is that convention centers and the hotels around them only have so many rooms. So when Further Confusion and MFF and Anthrocon, and I'm sure there are other cons having this problem too, they have more fursuiters than they have hotel rooms. So they have to figure out some way to fairly give out those hotel rooms. So there's basically two ways conventions decide who gets a room. You've got the lottery system, which Further Confusion did this last year and MFF is doing this year. The way that works is you register for the con. Once the convention is ready to go, they hold a lottery. If you're registered for the convention, you get entered in the lottery. When it comes to the lottery drawing, if you get a room, you got a room. And if you didn't, well, then you don't. FC doing it this year did two rounds of the lottery. My friends and I, for reference, this is the guys from the Further Confusion vlog, Sheriff Kurz Slush and I, we all entered the lottery. None of us got a room. MFF does a similar thing with the lottery. I don't know how their rounds work because I haven't been to MFF since 2019. I'm gonna be trying to go this year, so I'll be trying to get a room. The other major way that conventions do their room assignments is the way that Anthrocon does it. Anthrocon has a set number of ultra sponsor and mega sponsor and super sponsor and all those badges. Basically, you pay a lot more for the badge and the con gives you some extra perks. Usually I find that the first level of sponsor is worth it because you get some extra convention swag and I love to collect the t-shirts from the conventions. With Anthrocon, your sponsorship level determines where you go in line for a hotel room. So the higher sponsors get the higher priority for the hotel rooms, which I can kind of see the merit to. The downside is it creates a system where these super wealthy people can buy all the ridiculous sponsor badges for a thousand dollars or whatever they are, and then they get first in line for the hotel room. And again, like I said, I can see why that's appealing in some ways. The problem is when they get down to the normal registration window, the rest of the rooms for the rest of the people, it can be kind of a mad dash and you almost certainly will not get what you want. I know a lot of people that 
straight up didn't get a room for Anthrocon. I don't really know anyone that actually did get a room for Anthrocon, which kind of has me wondering sometimes who got a room at Anthrocon? <laughs> There's only so many hotels in Pittsburgh. I understand that, but where did all the rooms go? I, I'm like not exaggerating right now. The emails went out in my time zone at 4 p.m. and I and my proposed roommates were all ready to go. We're all sitting there like refresh, 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 refresh. The emails go out randomly over some amount of time. I'm not sure exactly how quickly. I got mine two minutes after the hour and I had everything pre-filled and ready to go. So as soon as I got that email, I pressed the button, I hopped in line, there's only 300 people ahead of me. And I know that the West End has several hundred rooms. By the time I got into the actual selection, none of the hotels within walking distance of the con were available. And I was the first one in my group to get into this hotel room reservation website. The hotel that I ended up getting was a 10 block walk away, almost a mile. And I was the first one in my group by like five minutes to get in for registration. I know some people that didn't get their hotel registration email for 15 minutes after the hour. I'm not sure that that's entirely on Anthrocon. There might be differences with email servers and services, but I tell that whole story to basically illustrate the point that a lot of people that really wanted to go to Anthrocon didn't get rooms. And a lot of people like myself that did get rooms didn't really get very good rooms. I don't know if you've ever been to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in July, but it is hot. The last two Anthrocons that I've gone to, it was between 80 and 95 the entire weekend. The other problem though is it's really humid in Pittsburgh. You get some of that lake effect humidity, so it's like 80% humidity or more. So if you're in costume and you go outside, it's like stepping into a steam room. It's so hot and your body can't sweat out any of that heat because the air is already so saturated with moisture. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna be able to get from our hotel 10 blocks to the convention center. Various cons have various ways of handling this. Anthrocon, to their credit, has a shuttle bus that's running through various hotels to the convention center and back. But anyway, I saw a lot of people saying they just weren't gonna go to Anthrocon because they couldn't get a room and they didn't know anyone that got a room. And in my friend group, I was the only one to get a room that didn't buy the ultra ridiculous sponsor badge level. And it was only a king size room, so I can only take one other person with me. So why am I talking about this? Basically, <laughs> I'm complaining. <laughs> I apologize. My dad always told me, if you bring up problems without talking about a solution, you're just being a complainer and nobody likes complainers. So of course, I am going to do my best to talk about some possible solutions here. And the trick is, any solution is going to not be fair to some group of people. That's just how it works. What I was thinking was trying to give some kind of priority registration to people that would be bringing at least one fursuit to the convention. The problem I see there though, as several of my friends pointed out, is that this kind of creates a pay to win system where if you have enough money to buy a fursuit, then you can kind of use your fursuit to pay for advanced booking at a hotel. And I get that. And which is why I'm not super attached to the idea. But that's also kind of what we have already. With Anthrocon, if you bought the really expensive registration, you got first dibs on the hotel. And if you can afford to buy a nice fursuit or several nice fursuits, then you can probably afford to buy that fancy registration and guarantee your slot. But I don't know anyone that did that. A lot of people that go to these conventions are not in well-paying jobs. Not to say that furries are poor, I actually know more like wealthy, successful people in the furry fandom than I know outside of it. Another proposed solution I've seen is rather than having refundable room reservations, I realize not everyone may have booked a hotel room before, so I'm gonna do my best to explain this. I actually work at a hotel right now. There are basically a couple of ways to book a room. There's a refundable room, which is you put down your credit card and if you don't show up, we'll charge you just for the first night and then we just release the room. But we don't charge you until you show up at the hotel or you fail to show up for the entire night that you booked. The other option is what's called a non-refundable room. And generally those ones are cheaper because you pay ahead of time and there's no refund option. Hence the name non-refundable. You can usually save quite a bit of money by buying a non-refundable room. Of course, the caveat there is that you're paying ahead of time. If something comes up and you can't make it for some reason, you're out 
however much money you spent on this ring. So with all that explanation, I've seen several people suggest that Anthrocon and other big conventions should move from allowing refundable reservations to only doing non-refundable reservations, or at least requiring a room deposit. Which is to say, requiring that you put down some money when you book the room to basically guarantee that you do in fact want that room. What I have heard, I don't know if this is true, and I've never been offered a room myself this way, but what I have heard is that some people have built programs to automate the Anthrocon room reservation system and will basically just reserve a bunch of rooms and then sell them to other people which drives the price of rooms up, but also creates a black market for furry convention rooms, which is <laughs> a really weird sentence. The black market for furry convention hotel rooms is tight. Putting down a deposit or making the rooms entirely non-refundable would theoretically at least cut down on the number of people that were able to buy up several rooms and then turn around and sell them for a profit. I don't know how big of a problem this is for conventions like Anthrocon, like I said, I've never been offered a room that way. I've never bought a room that way. I don't know if it's possible to get rooms that way in reality. I've just heard through the grapevine that that is something that happens. Anyways, all of that to say, big conventions have a little bit of a hotel room blocking problem right now. I would like to start a discussion about how we can possibly solve this problem. Obviously, this is somewhat of a unique problem to the furry fandom because like I said on Twitter, if I'm going to the chiropractor convention or Comic Con or something, it's not a big deal if I'm not right at the convention center because I can just drive over there. But if you're fursuiting or if you're working at the dealer's den or if it's 90 degrees and 90% humidity outside, a long walk is not a great idea. And even with the shuttle bus systems that Anthrocon offers, I, I haven't done this before, so I don't know what it's gonna be like. I guess we will find out. Anyways, like I was saying, I just wanted to start a conversation and ask you guys for your ideas. How might we be able to solve the convention room blocking problem? I can promise you, it is a problem. I have seen people for several years actually be complaining about how bad the hotel situation is at big conventions like Midwest Fur Fest and Anthrocon. Kind of the reason that Anthrocon, I suspect, has stuck to the system they have is because there is a ton of hotels in downtown Pittsburgh, but with how big Anthrocon and MFF have gotten lately, all of them fill up. Obviously, it would be great if they could just put some more hotels in downtown Pittsburgh, but I don't know where they'd put that. It's kind of full. The one that is really hurting right now is MFF. MFF's big problem is they're not even in downtown Chicago. And, you know, maybe that's for the best. But in Rosemont, where they are, all you have is the airport hotels. So you don't even have giant skyscraper hotels. You've got five, 10, maybe 15 story buildings with a couple hundred rooms total at each of the four or five hotels attached to the convention center. If you want to get a hotel for Midwest Fur Fest that's not in one of those hotels, you gotta go a little ways. And then you're walking through Chicago late at night, because I don't think there's a shuttle bus system for MFF, is there? Anyways, I didn't script this video, perhaps I should have. I'm really curious to know which ways you guys think would work to solve the hotel room problem that conventions are having, and I would really like a discussion to go on down in the comments. So if you have some ideas, or you wanna shoot down some of my ideas because you think they're awful, by all means, please go ahead and put those ideas down in the comments. And if you still watched all of this and you wanna to go to a convention, you should check out this video right here where I went through and listed all of the furry conventions that exist. Go ahead and check out that video and click over here to subscribe if you would be so kind. Thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.